evening, everyone. Oh, <laughs> calling the July 26th Oregon City Parks and Recreation Advisory Council Committee to order. Starting with introductions on our right. Bill Daniels. Sean Dashler. Mike Mitchell. Lisa Novak. Doug Dealey. Troy Bollinger. Roger Frollo Tice. Phil Lewis. And we have uh, members Chris Cook and Karen Mori are out this evening. Excuse me, everyone. I'm, I apologize for the interruption. Very important delivery. <laughs> Thank you. Excuse me, sir. I left something in my car. Can you pick it up? Apologies. Thank you. That's a first. Um, all right. Approval of minutes. Has everyone had an opportunity to review our last month's uh, May or May twenty fourth? I, I, I move to approve, but we'll have a question. All right. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And your question, Doug. Um, it was on the motion, and uh, we we have all the uh, the. We can ultimately list out the uh, parks to do, do, but I think we saw some parks that weren't on this list. And so the one, uh, you know, Four Oaks Park, which I didn't ever knew or was until we took the trip, is on that list. And then uh, minutes. Was it, were the minutes intended to include everything except the Mint, the Mint Park? Oh, uh, let me see. So which, which item are we uh, it's, under uh, the Charter Park six, Ordinance? Uh, it's 6A. 6A. We um, took the action on uh, correct, eliminating uh, Filbert on one side, and then we took a motion to which ones to adopt. So we had a motion to um, to not include Dement. Yes, and then there and was then a, we had a second motion to include all of the other parts. And since that motion seemed to be my my fault, um, it, it looked to me like uh, maybe Four yeah. Oaks wasn't in there, and I don't know if there are other ones that are missing as well. Uh, so, so we had, uh, let's see, one, two, uh, three. Barkley uh, Hills Park in there? Oh, uh, so those are uh, Barkley Hills. The other parks that are not listed are parks that were not the, um, the lowest hanging fruit, as it were, uh, to, to move forward. So those are parks that we'll bring forward at a later date for okay. review and uh, hopeful recommendation. But did Four Oaks fall into that, uh, fall in that grouping? <clears throat> I guess, I guess so. Okay, so these, in any case, these are the ones we approved. And these are the ones that we reviewed that we and have approved. Not, we Correct. have not made a decision on. Okay. Correct. I just yes. wanted to clarify that. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Anything else? All right. Um, so I just want to make sure, so we had um, uh, any opposing to the vote? I know we said affirmative. Any opposing? Great. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to item four on the agenda, citizen comments and issues not on the agenda. Do we have any citizen comments tonight? Uh, we do have citizen comments, but not uh, general comments uh, later on during oh, the agenda. Very good. All right. Item five, presentations, 5A, I-205 widening project by the Oregon Department of Transportation. <laughs> So we have uh, with us this evening representatives of uh, the Oregon Department of Transportation to speak to the I-205 widening project and park impacts. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks for having us here. My name is James Gregory. I work for HDR. I'm an environmental planner. Uh, we're, a, we're ODOT's uh, consultant on this project. Mm -hmm. I'm joined by Steve Drahota. He's HDR's project manager for the project. Okay, so I'll give you provide an overview of the I-205 corridor widening and seismic retrofit project. Thank you, um, and focus on the anticipated effects on John Storm Park and uh, Sportcraft uh, boat ramp parks. Um, so, uh, brief overview of the guiding design principles for the project. Um, the goal is to achieve a third freeway lane between Oregon 99 and Stafford Road, the part of the corridor that doesn't have that, and also seismically retrofit the structures on that corridor to withstand uh, magnitude 9 Cascadia subduction earthquake. Um, Abernathy Bridge is one of those structures. Okay. 
So some of the guiding principles are to not preclude future plan improvements, to uh, right size the project footprint, um, provide good financial stewardship uh, phase improvements, and along the lines of the right sizing the project footprint, uh, minimize the right of way and environmental impacts of the proposed improvements. Of course, maintain traffic mobility during construction. So, kind of to the point, focusing on Abernathy Bridge and the proposed improvements. Um, we're here on the <clears throat> east end of the bridge, and uh, right there on the Oregon City shoreline, of course, are two parks, John Storm Park on the north and um, the Sportcraft Boat, Boat Ramp Park to the south. And um, so uh, the proposed uh, kind of proposed project improvements that have been being developed for the past Year, mm -hmm. year or so, um, have been developed, and we have some uh, renderings here to kind of illustrate <coughs> what is proposed for Abernathy Bridge right there where 99E crosses under it. So this is essentially um, uh, going by John Storm Park, it would be on the right there. Um, you can see the one of the major differences is the piers, especially like the pier, the first pier on the shoreline is substantially larger than the piers there. Now, this would be a view of what the proposed improvements are from under the bridge. Um, and you can see that the differences between the existing piers and the proposed um, uh, larger pier that is built not just to include the widening of the, of the uh, roadway, but really to provide the seismic stability um, as part of the project. Could I ask a question on this diagram here? Mm -hmm. The lower portion of the bridge shows it wider than the the bridge itself um, by quite a bit. Is that and is that part of just a seismic piece, or is it also intended to look for potentially future lengths more than what you see there? Right. So that is really intended for the seismic piece. It's in large part because of how you build your large shafts that go about 180 feet deep. They had to go outside the existing edge of edge of the uh, bridge itself and then pushed a little further out because of pilings that exist below to avoid conflicts. So it looks like and has the appearance of being ready uh, to accept the widening, but in fact it does not. <coughs> yep. In fact, most of those are going to have some form of light fixture um, or sign um, on those ex extensions. So, okay. Here's a, a drawing that kind of illustrates that as well. Um, and. Uh, I think one of the things to note here is the, the piers of the new, um, the, the columns of the new pier would be within the existing ODOT right of way, but the um, aerial uh, extent of the pier would uh, go beyond the right of way and extend into the park areas. Okay. Um, kind of so focusing down on what the actual impacts of the park, and even though the slide says proposed temporary impacts, we'll talk about. Um, there are some permanent impacts um, to, to, to point out and to um, discuss with you. Um, the temporary uh, impacts would be during construction are shown on, on the um, uh, slide there uh, and kind of starting on the north in John Storm Park, it would be for construction of a temporary work bridge for the building of the uh, piers and also for material delivery and equipment delivery and storage. And it, as you can see, the proposal would occupy a, a large portion of the park. Um, on the, on the uh, sport craft boat ramp side, the temporary occupancy is also for the a temporary work bridge. And I have some um, renderings that show what that would look like uh, as well and later on, as well as an area for um, <coughs> Uh, the area in kind of the purplish color, the 4,480 square feet, would be for uh, rehabilitation of Abernathy Creek as it runs uh, through that area. Uh, right now, it's kind of an integrated state, and so it could uh, it would be um, contoured and graded to provide um, better um, uh, habitat quality. Does that include better fish passage? Right. Yes. Um, in addition, there would, uh, there's proposed um, subsurface soil stabilization in an area that's um, 
smaller than those, it's within the area and smaller than the area showed for those temporary, um, uh, temporary easements for that, um, those activities. And that would involve, and here Steve may jump in to uh, set the record straight, but essentially it would involve multiple deep um, shafts that would be drilled relatively narrow and grouted in uh, um, to create like a lattice to stabilize the soil because this area is subject to liquefaction in a seismic event. Um, and so it would be an array under, under the bridge that would be about 50 feet below the surfaces where they would stop being grouted. So once, it was, once they were installed and covered in the, in the site was restored, um, they would just be under there uh, forever. Um, apparently ODOT uh, needs to acquire a permanent um, easement for that subsurface presence. And so that, that is a permanent uh, feature of uh, the project and you know, would have that, uh, that right of way implication. Um, Oh, and I mentioned earlier, the uh, aerial, there is an aerial easement for where the, the pier now hangs over the park areas. Um, so here's some renderings to show the temporary work bridge. Uh, I uh, didn't mention before, but um, you know, we've been coordinating with Phil for the past year uh, to, to uh, kind of bounce these ideas and, and, and kind of have discussions about what, um, what the impacts, how to mitigate impacts. And so one of the things with this temporary work bridge is it would allow continued use of the um, boat ramp throughout construction with two short closures of about a week in duration during the construction and the deconstruction of those temporary work bridges. And those would be timed to be outside of the peak use season. We've also been coordinating with the Steelhead, um, the Steelheaders Association and to try and uh, kind of make sure we're uh, uh, understanding those things and accommodating that. So the, the boat ramp would remain in use. Um, there would be about 15 feet of clearance on, uh, at ordinary high water from, um, uh, from the ramp to, to get under it and through there. Okay. Also have a temporary work structure over on the other side, John Storm. What, uh, in the picture there, what's the piece on the right with the gray that's the roof? Shoulder. Oh, that's uh, the pavilion. That's oh, the, the yeah, one that's already there, okay. That's right. I drove by there on the way down, and I was like, wow, it doesn't really, <laughs> there's a lot, of, it doesn't really look like that, but <laughs> I get the idea. <laughs> Steve, is there anything in addition about the design now and what the proposed construction would involve? Well, there's a lot of detail I could get into, right. but I'm gonna sort of Okay. hold off and say, okay, if there's anything alive. you want to know, right. I'm happy to answer those specific things. I'm a bridge engineer, so I see this and I think I want to talk for 45 right. minutes about all the bridge stuff, but I'll spare you. <laughs> okay, yeah. And you can right. stop me. Yes, sir. Well, I'll ask some questions and then I won't have to ask you to come to the Greater Oregon City Watershed Council that I, I chair, because Abernathy Creek is included in our, mm -hmm. in our watershed. Um, the culvert, as you probably know, occurs. <clears throat> It's, it's dark, mm -hmm. it's a 23 foot diameter mm -hmm. cover, it's huge. And there has been discussions, and not everybody has agreed, whether or not uh, the darkness causes the fish to he as <coughs> hesitate, and whether there's a possibility and there's some kind of a lighting capability in the culvert itself. So when the adults come in, they can act actually move through and kind of um, not hold back. So a little bit of clarification. So our project ends before we actually get to the culvert itself. We're affecting the creek, the channelized creek itself, and we're adjusting slightly the location of it. We're not actually touching the, the culvert oh, right. itself, right? So the answer is no. Um, yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. So we're. It's just because of the limits of the way we're working. We're actually not even. So you're you're it. you're dealing with the creek. Uh... On the river side of the culvert? On the river side, that's correct. Okay. That's correct. And really, we're, we're affecting it because the new, if you can go back a slide, mm -hmm. uh, the new large columns, and it's difficult to see it, maybe in this. Uh, the one that, uh, no. Two forward. Right, there's perfect. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, on the very first, and then on my third pointer. Yeah, so right at this location, right here on the screen, mm -hmm. that large 
dark circle is that 12 foot diameter shaft mm -hmm. that extends down, you know, the 180 feet. Can you do that again? I was staring at oh, my, sure. my screen. Yep. Sorry. This dark spot oh, right okay. here is right. the large column and, and then below it shaft that extends in. Okay. It actually conflicts with the existing location of where that channel is that extends from the culvert. Okay. So because of that, we had to relocate the culvert a little bit to at least shift it out of the way so it's not right in the middle of it. Well, um, if you got to move the culvert, then you're going to build a light in there. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> just at the entry. It's, it's nearby, so yes. the, the yellow line is the extent of the work that we're, our area that we're talking about. The culvert itself is back adjacent to the street. So there's a little gap between the two. So we're focusing on how are we going to meander the channel leading up to the culvert and then tie into the existing little bit of channel that's left over. While you're on this screen, just a quick question. Um, just under the word storm on John Storm Park, that trail that heads um, <clears throat> down there, uh, will the waterfront portion of that be accessible to the public or will that all be kind of a safety cordoned off area even though it's outside of temporary impact your red zone we can look the reality is we can look into some details and and try to finesse to keep that that pathway open that's kind of what i was, yeah. I was wondering yeah. if you're the, just the numbers say that we have hard hat area no or we're pretty early in our design okay. we're about 25 30 percent we developed an area based on some needs but we can with, with that input, we can finesse and try to, you know, keep that pathway open. Yeah. So I'd say we, what we can look into it more. Right, and that's a good point to bring up because we, yeah. I mean, as a principle, we tried to uh, we'll try to maintain the uh, uh, access through the parks and, and the facilities that aren't being occupied um, uh, to the maximum extent possible. Uh, another thing, just in terms of time frame, um, and Steve you might want to correct me on this as we I looked off some old. Uh, a documentation, but the but the temporary work bridge would be in place uh, proposed for about 15 months. Okay. Right. And the other the other occupancies would be for shorter durations. Right, sir. A couple of questions on this on this slide. Uh, when you showed the the side view uh, at the sport craft ramp where boats would be able to go mm -hmm. under there, I I'm I'm going to assume on the John Storm Park side that people wouldn't be able to go under the temporary bridge. It looked like there wasn't wasn't the elevation. Uh, yeah. It, well, go ahead. The, the ground surface is considerably uh, is higher, closer to the top of the bridge there. So, um, and I would imagine, Steve, I think you can go. You will be able to go under it um, uh, on the river. On the not, river, but yeah. not okay, but right. not in the park. Okay. Can yeah. you go back to the one that shows the sixteen thousand square feet. So, of that, how much of that is under? How, how much of that is the temporary? bridge and how much of that is the storage that you referred to yeah so the bridge would be the uh probably the narrow strip along the edge of the bridge you know the edge where the bridge is and the additional area of that that kind of landscaped area would be for the delivery and storage okay so, good way so to how get about it. how about minimize the impact by using the vacant lot on the north side of mcdonald's instead of using up 14,000 square feet of a park. <clears throat> both the, both city owned own. property. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we could look into that to see if we can minimize the amount of temporary impacts in this, in this location. The reality is there is some really large equipment. And I'm going to turn back to this slide here. That's going to be running up and down a series of rigs, whether it's a drill rig, concrete trucks, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the large uh, pieces of the column and the shaft that have to be laid on the ground before you pick it up by the crane to put it in place. Mm -hmm. And so there's some minimum lengths that have to, be, have to be adjacent to the site because you can't haul it across streets or anything like that. <clears throat> that said, just like before, we can look to hone and reduce to the maximum extent possible, um, but there's going to be some area that gets in. Yeah. So we, we can look into this. Yeah. So one of, one of the things we've done today is to, to try and trade off with, to not affect the parking to the maximum extent right. possible in, in the area, especially on this on the Sportcraft boat ramp. But, yeah. Okay. When do you plan on starting the temporary bridge? Uh, in terms of year? What year? Yeah. 
Well, so I'll put the asterisk on this. Mm -hmm. So right now, as I'm sure you guys are very aware, um, lots of conversations about how to fund the construction of this. There is no construction funding right now. So assuming that the funding comes in and the schedule doesn't change, which, you know, honestly, I don't have a, I'm not a good predictor on what that's going to be. Uh, the earliest this would be is sometime late 2020 to early 2021. Could maybe be a year after that depends on the sequence the contractor wants. So in that kind of time frame, think of 2021 plus or minus. Mm -hmm. um, assuming that the funding comes in according to the plan that we're working off of, obviously with this discussion of value pricing coming in and everything that, that comes with value pricing and tolling, it could extend out a number of years um, if that's the mechanism. So what we're communicating is while there's no funding, the current schedule shows construction starting in 2020 and then being completed before 2025. So it's a four year duration. And this is just one piece of that overall four year timeline. Mm -hmm. you, um, you mentioned something that kind of conflicted one of my assumptions and that was on parking. I was going to assume that most of the downstorm parking lot would also be consumed and closed. The one that's under the bridge now? Yeah. Is that correct or? Well, that would be, that would why there would be um, mm -hmm. alternate parking. Let me get to that in a moment. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, before I get into the mitigation, kind of want to talk about a couple of the procedures related to what Steve just mentioned is, uh, Oregon Department of Transportation is trying to, uh, com uh, move ahead and complete the requirements under the National Environmental Policy Act, um, uh, to help move the funding and the other project development along and related to that, um, there's two compliance with two laws that deal, uh, come into play when parks are involved That's section 4F of the. Department of Transportation Act and Section 6F from the Land and Water Conservation Fund Act. And uh, uh, so this is where I was telling Phil, I didn't want to get into too many of the details <laughs> of all this because kind of, you guys probably deal with this on, on some occasions. But um, so there's a couple of actions that come from that, but that's why we've been, you know, part of the reason we've been coordinating is to make sure we're getting things lined up for uh, compliance with those. And so uh, we've been having discussions about uh, efforts to minimize and avoid impacts and, and uh, you know, kind of this discussion will help inform that as well. Um, but uh, uh, so uh, just to tell you about what those procedural requirements are is under Section 4F of the DOT Act. Uh, that's, that's uh, the onus is on H, on, uh, on ODOT uh, and Federal Highway Administration to assess the impacts of the, of the project on a park and make a determination and then get the concurrence of the jurisdiction where the park is. And so kind of at this point, there's kind of an action where ODOT has sent Phil a letter saying, hey, here's, here's, the, here's the impacts we anticipate. Here are the mitigation measures. Do you concur with this finding, which in this case is called a de minimis impact on the park, and that's largely based on the fact that there are no permanent impacts, that the, that the impacts to activities and facilities are temporary, and there's been, uh, you know, efforts to try and mitigate those to the extent possible. Um, the other, uh, for the Section 6F of the Land and Water Conservation Fund, um, that deals with properties where there was grant funding from the Land and Water Conservation Fund, and that applies to sport craft boat ramp park. And so that involves when there's a temporary occupancy of greater than 180 days, which we're looking at here, there's a whole process that you go through um, that will take a long time, but essentially where that's considered a conversion of that property from recreation use. And so we have to go through processes of, of kind of assessing what the value of that converted property is and uh, locating a, a replacement property um, even though that that property will remain a park when the project's done. So that they kind of overlap in as much as some of the mitigation um, dovetails with each other, and we're working through those processes. And of course, there's the city charter um, requirement that there be a public vote for, for any um, action like this. And so that was the subject of the council resolution last, last week, or recently, mm -hmm. right? yeah, to refer that to the ballot for a vote this fall. And that's related to this too. So kind of want to just get those kind of regulatory and procedural things that we're, we're working on now. And, and, and it's related to the mitigation measures that we've um, proposed and, and developed in coordination with the city. Um, and those include, um, to the maximum extent, maintaining park access and safe use of the park facilities. Um, I would just say, of not 
that says of the occupied, uh, unoccupied area, but I would say even in as much as the, the temporary work bridge would go over the boat ramp, the boat ramp would continue to be um, available for use during construction. Um, and then fully restore all the areas occupied to pre-construction pre conditions or better. Um, and, um, and then another item that um, has come up and uh, kind of pursued, pursued was uh, in coordination with Oregon City, uh, identify and develop um, improvements for the trail that goes from the RV park uh, area, the south end of Clackamat, down to Clackamat Drive. Um, especially because there's issues with where the high water affects the trail use. And so mm -hmm. uh, to do that, um, as mentioned, maintain safe access to and use of the sport craft boat ramp throughout construction, with the exception of the two short closures during construction and deconstruction. And then um, provide temporary, temporary parking during construction. And I've got a slide to illustrate that right after this. And then lastly, um, continue obviously in close coordination with the city through design um, and construction process and in particular through the process of uh, working through the section 6f conversion which will involve identifying another uh, piece of property to um, essentially mitigate for that converted area and we've had some discussions about where that might be. Just before you shift all yes, of that and you probably know it my understanding is the sport craft ramp is actually a city-owned facility, not owned by a sport craft marina. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, we go back to the. Yeah. So um, that yes, this this figure is a little um, uh, not quite right. The area, the the um, the shaded area, if you will, um, kind of to the to the to the east of the yellow line um, is the city, the limits of the city parcel right and, this, and the marina is actually that state that's well it's odl uh, we have a, a lease with yeah. odl for the uh, waterway yeah and then the the city does own the uh, the parking lot boat ramp area so we have that as a lease then uh, we own the property uh the waterway is a is a lease which we then sublease to uh sportcraft for right. for use for their docks mm -hmm. So this is a, an ODOT parcel, just so it's just kind of north of the Abernathy Helm or Oak. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it would be available, this is just a concept um, uh, of how you could get some uh, stalls in there for both cars and trailers. Um, but it would be available to offset the loss of uh, parking under the bridge during construction. Mm -hmm. um, also potentially could be permanent. Um, if that's something uh, the city wants to explore, um, and could be that mitigation for the um, 6F conversion potentially. So we're continue to discuss that, but that's, that's uh, kind of proposed to help mitigate the uh, parking impacts during construction. And a question on that. Uh, mm -hmm. So that parking lot has no boat parking, but this drawing for mitigation shows boat trailer parking. Is there a purpose for that? Um, but In other words, that, park, that parking lot was designed very clearly to not have boat accommodate parking. boat trailer parking. And so if we're mitigating for small car parking to then add boat trailer parking is counter to that. that okay. So I'm just wondering if there was a logic behind that or was this just kind of drawn out as a possible it was drawn out with the understanding that the parking for the boat ramp was really the you know kind of a critical concern here so well and some would say it is yeah. i mean there's there's two conflicting uh issues issues there i would say but when john storm park was constructed there was a very clear intent that that parking lot was for the use of that park uh -huh. and so that's why there's uh uh, kind of separation so that they couldn't just pull through anyway and you know some of those elements were placed there and it's in the record be because of that okay possible issue yeah so I just bring that up because if if you're mitigating for something at Sportcraft then that makes a lot of sense uh -huh. but if you're mitigating for John Storm only it wouldn't right 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, in, in the spirit of things. Yeah, yes, yeah. certainly. So. Um, it's kind of a sketch that was based on yeah. that assumption and yeah. it certainly isn't, okay. you know, it's just a sketch, right? Gotcha, gotcha, okay. We are very flexible <laughs> on how to put the striping in. When you said 20 30 percent, I just wasn't sure. Yeah. Maybe there yeah. was a real concerted effort to put those for something I was missing, so. I didn't realize I would not characterize that. it as a concerted effort. Right. No, okay. no, we just we threw something together to demonstrate that we could, if that's where you want to go, we can change it to something else gotcha. just equally as a stroke of the pen. Good. Good. Okay. Good. I, I have a question about um, Abernathy Creek. Uh, and, uh, you, you said that you were going to <clears throat> coincide with the fishing uh, going on, or you're, you're aware that you were going to coincide with what, what, what fishing is going on and try to not have an impact on it? Is that what I heard? Or? Right. The, so the time, the closure of the boat ramp to the lowest use times of the year. Okay, but that has nothing to do with the actual fishing seasons then, or is that? Well, no, I guess uh, you know, essentially that, uh, you know, the uh, highest use time being uh, February I, through June for, I, for yeah. fishing. Yeah. I guess what I'm trying to get at is yeah. the species that are going up Abernathy oh. Creek and how that is. Yeah, yeah. Because you're going to be drilling right there. Uh -huh. And how, what impact is that going to have right. on yeah. Abernathy Creek further up if right. the species are. Yeah. So we are, you know, and, and with respect to that, we're going through uh, the informal consultation with the um, uh, Oregon Fish and Wildlife and okay. NIMS about uh, making sure we're compliant with the federal highway aid program uh, biological opinion. And, and, and yeah, so that's certainly a, an okay. important consideration. Thank you. Yeah. Is it fair to assume taking that one step further, just when we built the, the dock there that you'll have only certain months that you're allowed in water work yeah. and you have to work around those periods anyway. That's what I was yeah. after too, thank yep. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thought you were getting it. Right. Yep. That would all apply here. Certainly. Does that, um, would that add on to the duration, the estimated four year duration yeah. or too early to tell? I'll take it. Yeah. So we included the Indian water work duration as part of our construction uh, schedule development. Okay. So, in fact, it drove an extra season that we otherwise wouldn't have needed if we had a longer in-water work window. So, yep, consider it in. Okay. I have a question unrelated to this. You may not know the answer to, but maybe you can find out. You know, seven years ago, seven days years ago, uh, the arch bridge was closed for rest work on that bridge. Do you know if that was brought up to Seismic 9 when they did that? The arch bridge in Oregon City? Um, I'll have to look into it. I actually don't think it was. Yeah. Um, the good news is the firm that helped that worked on that is also a sub consultant, uh, so I can I can find that out very okay. easily. I doubt it was, given the time and nature of the design criteria. Then, yeah. um, it it wouldn't have even been the Cascadia subduction zone at the levels we're talking about now for the Abernathy Bridge. Right. It would have been a lower seismic criteria to begin with. Yeah. So, so even if it was designed to higher standards, I don't think it would be designed to the standards that we're applying on this entire project. Yeah, I would, I would but I'll, I will look into it and Thank you. get that answer back. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. No? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to And we do have a, uh, we have a public comment uh, for this item. Um, so Jesse Buss has a public comment. Great. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. <clears throat> Hope this isn't inappropriate because it's really questions I have for them, but mm -hmm. maybe <laughs> makes sense to put it on the record. <laughs> uh, Jesse Buss, Oregon City. So uh, first I want to say I agree with Doug's comment about restoring Abernathy Creek as part of this, at least in part. Uh, you know, with the Federal Highway Administration being involved, they do have to comply with NEPA and the Endangered Species Act. We have more than a dozen federally endangered salmon and steelhead runs on the Willamette. And we used to have strong runs in Abernathy Creek going up into Newell. Mm -hmm. We don't anymore, not even close. So the, the Endangered Species Act requires agencies not only to protect species from extinction, but also to re restore them to the historic um, you know, population. So this would be a great opportunity to, um, you know, replace the bridge and upgrade the habitat at the same time. Uh, second concern is, and I don't know 
if this has been looked at or if this is later in the design phase. But as you all know, the platform at John Storm Park uh, is really the first time you can see the falls when you come into Oregon City. And I just wanted to make sure that a new, a new piling is not going to block the view mm -hmm. of the falls from the, the platform at John, John Storm Park. So maybe that's a question for later design day. But thank you. Thank you, Justin. Just, uh, thank just, you, Justin. Um, just a comment on uh, Abernathy Creek. Uh, last year, uh, Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife uh, did some ladder restructions on Monopo Dam. Uh, you go down in Reese, and there's that dam there. And it appears to have improved coho going up into the uh, upper part of the watershed. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item six of the agenda, general business. Item 6A, Water Board Park Settlement Funds. Okay. Um, so uh, this item is on the agenda because I uh, did receive uh, comments from multiple members of this group that they'd like to discuss the Water Board Park Settlement Funds and uh, making a, a recommendation to the City Commission. And so that's why this, uh, this topic is here. A uh, little background information, as you are all aware, uh, tree cutting that occurred in Water Board Park. Uh, the city recently settled on a uh, civil suit in the amount of $260,000. Um, a little background on um, the city's costs just to get the uh, conversation started. Um, the city has incurred uh, roughly $105,000 in attorney's costs uh, and fees as related to the, um, uh, the suits. And so... Uh, you know, base point there for that. And then additionally, uh, the city will have to do some um, mitigation work uh, with, the, with the trees that uh, were cut down. So we have some additional tree work that is going to be required uh, on the Water Board Park property, which uh, the staff would recommend that we use those funds first to um, take care of the needed tree work in Water Board Park before discussing uh, further items that we might be able to, to spend additional funds on. Uh, when we originally did, um, when we originally had the the trees cut down, uh, we did some uh, cost estimates with some firms. That was a few years back, uh, which ranged, I think, in the, the thirty thousand ish dollar range um, for for taking care of the tree work, and that's over a multiple year. I uh, needed to do tree repairs on. Um, improving the structure of the trees and the trees that we can repair and then doing uh, tree removals and, and other items as required for the trees that are too far gone to, to save in, in an appropriate way. So uh, with that, I will um, turn it over to Lisa to open up for discussion. All right. Any comments, questions? Yeah. <laughs> I'll start. Um, so I saw that on the consent agenda. Uh, of the city commission three or four weeks ago. I don't remember exactly what the date was. Um, and I did go and make a public comment. I made it clear to the commission that I was speaking for myself. Um, but I did also say that I was quite confident that I'd have the full support of PRAC. And, and what I suggested was uh, basically what Phil kind of alluded to, that uh, all of those funds be reserved for park enhancement purchase uh, purposes. Uh, and that they wouldn't be spent until such time as we could have a public process to use those funds. Um, I, uh, my impression was there was much nodding of heads. I think the commission agrees with that. The only comment that was made was by the mayor, and he brought up um, that that would be net of attorneys, uh, net of legal fees, um, which seemed reasonable. Um, Although I had no idea it would be $105,000. That's, that is mind boggling. Um, anyway, uh, I just wanted to bring you up to speed on that. Also, um, Dee Dee Dahl's um, very strong supporter of our park system and a member of the Parks Foundation Board, spoke right after I did and basically said the same thing. And again, I think the commission's in favor of it. I think we need to go on the record with a letter um, over Chris's signature, uh, basically outlining what I just mm -hmm. said. You want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to that effect. Second. Clarification. 
And uh, I will also say we have um, we have some public comment as well for this this topic. Uh, Cameron McCready, as well as uh, I did receive an email from um, a, a neighbor within the McLaughlin Neighborhood Association that wanted to make sure that you had information from her as well. So. Um, before we decide to vote on it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. can, can I ask a clarification, though, on the motion? Is it that funds be directed uh, towards items in that park or in the park system? How broad was that portion of the discussion? You mean it, in, in the motion or what I said, what I what, said to what the you were saying. Well, what, what you're saying tonight and what I... I was thinking when, when you and I had have discussed this in the past, past that kind of that money would be spent back at Waterboard Park where possible. And tonight you didn't, spe didn't specify that. Intentionally, because I didn't specify that before the commission. Okay. I think that's something that this group should decide tonight. And I should have mentioned that before I tried to make a motion. Okay. So I think that's something we do need to decide, whether we're going to recommend park-wide public process or Waterboard Park, then it, public process. Then I would suggest maybe we consider amend the motion. Amend, amending yeah. the how, motion and, how, and slowing down. How about if I withdraw the motion until we hear the public comment and then we discuss some more and I'll write it again. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, great. Withdrawn. Okay. All right. Public Sorry. comment. <laughs> no, no, no. That's a good point. Well, it's the pressure's on. <laughs> I just printed off three of these. That way, only some of you won't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> the chair will be listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see a Ah, uh, yes. Welcome to Waterboard Park. And uh, just for clarification tonight, Cameron, are you speaking on behalf of the Neighborhood Association or uh, of personal? On behalf of the Neighborhood Association. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm Cameron McCready. I live on 204 Washington Street in Oregon City. And I am also a, uh, at the chair of the McLaughlin River Association. So since the summer of 2015, when steering committee member Jesse Buss here, uh, pursuing a tip from a concerned neighbor, rushed into Waterboard Park and found a sweatshirt on a stump with a landscaper's logo and phone number printed on it. Um, the m a has been involved with the waterboard tree cutting case since that time, and, and, and uh, uh, Jesse deserves credit in helping the pursuit of justice. <clears throat> he, he watchdogged this, made sure the county went after him and the city. Um, needless to say, the perpetrators should, should have been fined the full amount allowed by the law, which is three times what they were fined. Uh, it, it seems a bit excessive that well, I don't know, almost a hundred and some thousand going just for legal fees. Doesn't leave a whole lot left. Uh, the pictures you're looking at are only a part of the uh, destruction that we saw in the park. But the real problem, however, is that led to this blatant act is the years of neglect and lack of deserved protection of all of Waterboard Park. Uh, the Neighbor Association is asking that the full settlement be dedicated solely toward the needed rest restoration of Waterboard Park crime took place in Waterboard Park, the restitution belongs in Waterboard Park. This small pot of money um, will not be enough to bring Waterboard Park back to its natural state, but will go a long way in master planning, um, restoration of the damaged area, uh, perhaps some bike and hiking trail maintenance and, and ivy removal. There's an awful lot to do there at Waterboard Park, and this nearly isn't enough, but it would certainly demonstrate to the community that we're serious about protecting Waterboard Park and making it more accessible to our citizens of Oregon City. So thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Thanks, Cameron. Um, and I'd like to, to read just really quickly a, an email I received from uh, Janine Offutt. 
I uh, hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, it is correct. Excellent. Uh, so she wrote, I, I agree with the McLaughlin Neighborhood Association regarding the settlement money in the civil case involving illegal tree cutting in Waterboard Park. Each and every dollar awarded should go to the rehabilitation and maintenance of the park, not to the general fund. As a longtime user of Waterboard Park, I specifically want to see that the damage inflicted by the illegal tree cutting gets addressed. The trail that heads the back of the awesome basalt formations needs to be cleared. This is long overdue. Some damaged trees need remedied pruning and some planting should be helpful. If any funds remain after the work is completed, they should go to the ongoing maintenance of Waterboard Park. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> any other comments? Uh, those are all the comments. All right, very good. All right, up for discussion. Question? Let me, let me um, add to, before we start make another motion. Um, <clears throat> Originally, I, I um, thought that <clears throat> the civil settlement money should go towards, all of that should go towards um, Waterboard Park only. And, and then when I find out that <clears throat> I got to thinking if we, the city settled <clears throat> with, with the parties, knowing that they're on we the city is on the hook for one hundred and five thousand dollars in legal fees. Why wasn't that part of the settlement? I don't I don't understand that. I I um, <clears throat> so I'm I'm actually um, would be um, in favor of making a motion that all of that money, all six hundred and twenty thousand, go toward Waterboard Park, that the legal fees not be taken out of that fund. That's that's my position. What's the total settlement to clarify? Uh, two hundred and sixty thousand. Two sixty and and not and then of that two sixty, or I should say, as part of that is the are the legal fees for one hundred five. Correct. We weren't awarded legal fees plus two sixty. Correct. Okay. We were awarded uh, two sixty thousand flat responsible for our own legal fees. That the city would have to um, pay the legal fees, and the question is where the money would come from. The um, we could do that, and the city's got to figure out where the money could come from, and maybe they're going to take it from the Parks and Recreation budget. Uh, so, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know the benefit because some program in the city will lose in the process. I concur. That was my thought as well. And then, as we were discussing, I thought, okay, so this leaves us, if my math is right, one hundred fifty-five thousand mm -hmm. of a balance, mm -hmm. approximately. Maybe 50% to water board and the remaining 50% be dispersed throughout other parts. I have some questions, um, which will be part of that. Um, I know it's, when you're cutting down trees, it's hard to put a price on restoring that. You can't restore a tree that's been there for many, many years. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I would imagine through negotiations and litigation that some price tag was put on it by some assessor. Correct. What is that number? Uh, so the total damages as uh, calculated by Arbor's reports that the city uh, solicited was uh, close to $700,000. Okay. So in that case, so is, what I'm understanding then is they're saying that if it were possible to restore what was damaged, it would cost about that, that number, 700 and something. Uh, that's uh, taken into account. Uh, there's uh, specific, and I, I don't know enough to, I know just enough to probably be dangerous with this information, but uh, so it's timber trespass as well as um, the um, undue enrichment to the property owners. And so their ability to sell their properties above the, the park uh, for a higher amount in addition to the, the value of the, the timber uh, within the park uh, to be used for um, recreational purposes um, is valued at, sure. uh, at a, there's a calculation. And again, I, I can't get into the specifics right. because I would probably have to read it again to get into the specifics. <laughs> well, and usually, and usually when that assessment's done, I mean, you can't, again, you can't restore Correct. A, a tree that's gone. Once it's yeah, gone, it's I mean, gone. You can plant another one, but that doesn't do the same can. thing that the one's gone. So, exactly. Uh, but if it were possible to restore that, then that restores 
any of the usability and damage and view visibility and everything else by everyone else if, if it were possible to restore it. So taking that out, it still seems like $155,000 um, is less than the material damage done by, by the crime. And so for that reason, I would suggest of the 260000 we take care of the legal fees out of that. It's a park issue. It happened in the park. Take the legal fees out of it, and 100% of what's left go to Waterboard Park. It was a park issue. It was a Waterboard Park issue. Uh, it's less than what is going to replace the damage that was made. I say 100% goes there. That's my opinion. Phil, you, you mentioned a number. Did I hear you say 30000 to um, not, not repair the damage, but... Uh, for well, the yeah, I guess, I guess just, just pure uh, put a Band-Aid on the damage. Correct. Was 30? Uh, uh, roughly. Roughly? Yes. Yeah. So we're really talking about 125000 after the after you Kind of it. unaccounted. Correct. And we're, we're currently soliciting bids, so I, I will probably have a, a okay. better but, number but in that a month or so. Correct. And I hate to have to say this, but $125,000 doesn't do much. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to see us spread it around. Let's do something in Waterboard Park with some impact. So I'm, I'm with Troy, 100%. We recommended the city commission that 100% go to Waterboard Park. We can't give back the citizens what they've lost, but we can take all the money and get as close as we can to that and replace yeah. it somehow to those citizens right. of that community. If, if we spread around 125000 we're not even going to see it, unfortunately. No, so. no worries. Yeah, I concur with both of you. That's, it, it needs to be 100% to that park. And we use some of the money, money to build a blind so the property owner won't have the... <laughs> 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 How about a big blue tarp? <laughs> <laughs> Brain structure. So I'll, I'll make a motion. Okay. If it's, is it time? Yes. More discussion? <laughs> Sorry. Oops. That's your job. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you should win the election, make sure you don't you don't, don't do that. <laughs> That's good. Advice from Doug. <laughs> Write that down. Please make a motion. Um, I move that uh, uh, Prack assign uh, work with uh, Chris Cook to, uh, as our chair to write a letter to the city commission with Prack's recommendation that. 100% of the funds after legal fees from the Waterboard Park tree cutting settlement be spent in Waterboard Park and that a public process be used to determine how that money will be spent in Waterboard Park. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, I actually have to take roll. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you didn't uh, get all that? <laughs> uh, so Daniels? Aye. Dashler? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Novak? Um, can I say a somewhat reluctant aye? Uh, Neely? Aye. Bollinger? Aye. And Fowler Tice? Aye. The motion passes. All right, um, moving on to agenda item 6B. So um, not a lot of information to share on this topic at this time. Um, we have, as we discussed at the last uh, PRAC meeting, um, the city has received estimates from construction firms um, and we've been working with the stakeholder group on uh, refining a scope of work drawing uh, that the stakeholder group would like to move forward with. Um, we did receive a uh, updated version of the uh, scope of work drawing. Todd Island as uh, an architect by trade and as part of the stakeholder group submitted original drawings to the building official who reviewed them, uh, made some um, uh, decisions based on the scope of work drawing and in consulting with the, the building code and a revised version was crafted by, by Todd and provided to us about two weeks ago. Uh, we've been uh, attempting to get um, uh, updated estimates from construction firms and if anyone's out and uh, knowing what's going on in the construction industry recently, uh, it's difficult to get a response back right now from folks that want to come out and give an estimate on a, on a project. 
uh, particularly a project where we don't have a definitive groundbreaking timeline. So um, we're still uh, attempting to get responses from firms. And once we do have uh, a couple of estimates based off of the updated scope of work drawings, we'll be bringing that back to the uh, PRAC for a review and uh, to looking for a recommendation in some form to move forward to the city commission. I have a question. Um, do you, I <clears throat> as part of that, that group discussion, I think that Paramount is, is uh, still is getting electricity back to the building, uh, regardless of when the contractors are prepared to give bids, but we know that they're going to need power if, in fact, we go through with this project, and that that's going to help um, light that area, specifically inside if we need it, but certainly on the outside, on the alcoves that um, are subject to... Um, vandalism and people who like to set fires, those kind of things. Um, and I, I strongly urge that the commission, at least um, um, our city commission, at least consider that we need to get the power back to that facility, regardless of the plumbing issues and, and the other things that need to be corrected, but we need, we need power. And our anticipation, uh, you know, I, I would hope that we would be able to receive responses back from uh, some companies before the this winter so that we can have a discussion as, as a group at PRAC and then make a recommendation to move forward to the city commission before we get into the rainy season, um, which is when you typically would see more of the deterioration of, of the of the facility. So uh, hopefully we'll, you know, before we even get into that time frame, have uh, information that will help guide us in that conversation. Do you feel there's enough lighting on the outside, the exterior of the building, to um, discourage vandalism? Uh, we actually outside? haven't seen much vandalism on the building itself. We do see vandalism in the park. Uh, we actually uh, quite a bit of, of tagging has occurred up on the restroom building uh, in the center of the park. Um, but luckily, we haven't seen uh, any substantial uh, vandalism on the Buena Vista house itself. So do we have any, I haven't been up there at, at dark, but do we have? We do have motion activated uh, lights that are there uh, that are battery powered. Uh, and we have, um, uh, in working with PGE, made uh, repairs to the interior lighting of the of the park. And so it is, it is lighter than it was. I mean, it's still not fully illuminated um, as, as some of the facilities are, but uh, much better than it was. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Moving on to item 6C, Glen Oak Park Naming Committee update. Uh, so as you're aware, um, the uh, new park, and I keep putting it down as Glen Oak Park Naming Committee update uh, for lack of a, another name to, to give to this project, but um, we have um, we have put together a naming committee, which has met twice thus far. I originally met to um, decide on a, a time frame and a process for which to give the park a name. Uh, secondly, met uh, recently a, a couple weeks back to uh, review all of the name suggestions that we received from the general public, of which we received uh, 403 suggestions, actually 404 suggestions. Um, from the general public on what we could call the park. Uh, I'm going to pass out um, the recommendations from the committee and for your review and your approval to move forward with a um, with an official um, vote of the general public. So our um, our process does include going to a vote of the people. Uh, given a, a finalist list of candidates, uh, which would happen during the months of August and September. So starting August, uh, right around August 1st, and concluding at the end of September, uh, selected four names that would be um, open for selection. Those would include Caulfield Creek Park, Tyrone S. Woods Memorial Park, Machino Park, and Waldo Caulfield Memorial Park. And uh, we had two members of this group represented in the subcommittee 
uh, conversation. So I guess I'll uh, turn it over to uh, Mike and Sean to elaborate further. Well, I think that there's the one key element that hasn't been brought up yet that that needs to be mentioned, and, and Phil's going to be writing it as the next stage is going to be a survey on the website. But by far, by far, probably more than all of the other suggestions combined, um, the number one suggestion was Robert Libke Park. And uh, the police department is not in favor of supporting that name and asked us to not consider it because they plan on naming the new police station uh, after Robert Libke. And so going along with that sentiment, we made the decision or chose not to forward that name, even though technically it was a very popular suggestion. And so I think Phil's going to write something up um, mentioning why that's not on the final list. So the public understands that, yeah, we suggested it and they didn't listen. No, we listened. And, and here's a, a, a very good reason why we chose not to put it forward. So does that Okay. Yeah. So we'll do a uh, we'll do a press release next week as well as uh, social media push. Uh, we Kristen Brown or our, uh, I always forget her official title. I want to say public information officer, but that's not her title. Uh, community communications coordinator uh, will be helping us in drafting uh, the press release as well as uh, messaging in regards to Officer Libke. All right. Um, and I will maybe ask the um, our distinguished committee member, uh, Mr. Neely, to help me with the Caulfield Creek uh, description because uh, I, I believe I probably fell a little flat not knowing the uh, appropriate description to give to Caulfield Creek. So that's that's the name of the creek. <laughs> <laughs> and that's basically what the sentence is. Three more sentences. So. It's not a no-name creek, it is a black creek. All right, any other questions, comments regarding this topic? No. All right, moving on to, oh. I, I just want to say I was pleasantly surprised at the number of responses. Oh, yeah. I thought that, that's terrific. That, that says a lot to me. Well, I think what I think to, to add on to that, it's going to be exciting when you get to October, November, and we're sitting at a commission meeting with the PRAC chair recommending a final name because we will have clearly gone through a public process. There's no doubt about it. There's been so much public input already, and there will be in, in the end, so that if you want to see something done the right way, this is a great example, I think. And not to put you on the spot, Phil, but when are we going to move some dirt? <laughs> uh, so we would be moving dirt uh, in the summer of 2019. Next okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a comment, if I might, independent of the names here, but I, I noticed we have uh, people who uh, were d decorated uh, veterans. Yeah. Um, I look at the memorial we have for veterans uh, at uh, the cemetery. There are very few names on that. I look at them, uh, and this is, no, this is no criticism at all, but the children of murdered, uh, uh, the parents of murdered children's memorial got a huge number of names. And it, it seems to me that uh, we, we ought to find some mechanism to give the recognition on our, our veterans memorial. Uh, there, there's just a dearth of names on it, which is sort of surprising to me. And we've had a lot of people that have lost their lives at Oregon City residents. So I just wanted to throw that out there. And that veterans wall, those are for Oregon City veterans? Or is um, it those on the walls or from Oregon City residents? Or? I Actually, I'm not positive. Okay. Which one is it? The, the, the one you're talking the about, memorial the veterans. The, yeah. Yeah. Is it for Oregon City veterans? I, I do not know that for a fact. Okay. Because the parents of murdered children is for all of Clackamas County, I believe. It's for all which Oregon. Is, it's it's all Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. So that's going to be part of why that yes. list is yes. off. But yeah. no, no, because a bigger area. Right, but the point is that it, it just—I don't see the name name on the list growing, and it's 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 much of it as a blank wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good point. I'm hearing you, Doug. Yeah. I, I 
But that's independent of our discussion. Yeah. But I saw no, this. That's a good I, point. It is. Yeah. The cemetery is a park, so. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'll yeah. make sure to uh, connect with uh, Jonathan Weberly on that as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Doug, just say, I have a group that might be interested in that. I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Okay, item 6D, Willamette Falls Legacy Update. Uh, so we're still in the planning phase of the Willamette Falls Legacy Project, working on the design criteria with uh, consultant Snowheda, as well as uh, we have submitted paperwork for the joint permit application. Uh, with Army Corps of Engineers and um, are moving through that process. Uh, they had a uh, partners meeting earlier today and gave an update. Uh, the um, friends group have hired uh, somewhat recently their executive director and even more recently have hired on an additional staff person. So we have a, um, an actual staff working for the uh, friends group and trying to again uh, build that bridge between the uh, the public and the private side and getting additional funds brought into the site. So uh, I know they have a $10 million goal of um, fundraising and they're working very hard and have made quite a bit of progress towards that effort. Okay. Very good. Any comments in the group? Questions? Thank you, Phil. I will ask a question. Mm -hmm. I know when they first four years of that period of time, the uh, responsibilities are kind of de de uh, designated to the four partners. Mm -hmm. And Clackamas County's responsibility was to seek funds on the federal level, I think. But uh, has anything much happened that way? Or do you know? Uh, I know that they were working very closely on the economic development portion and have been working with um, Eric Underwood, our uh, economic development manager for the city on the, the private side. Um, but this was before the Riverwalk specifically. Yeah, for the Riverwalk specifically, uh, I, I can't tell you, I mean, I know that we have representatives of um, of our electeds. Uh, Schrader's office is, is represented. Uh, I know the state has is, is given, uh, I think, roughly $18 million in, in funds uh, through the state, through bonds, uh, to go towards the project. And so, um, there's uh, definitely a commitment at, at that level. I'm, I'm not sure if we've received any, any federal uh, specific funds or if there's been any movement in attempting to procure uh, federal funds for the project. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Item 6E, Hanger House. Uh, so this is a standing update, and I'm, uh, I guess, curious if, uh, since we have had our grand opening ceremony for the uh, Ermitinger House, if you'd like this to remain as a standing update. I'd be more than happy to continue giving updates, or we can update as we have information available. Um, at this point, we have, uh, again, had the grand opening. Um, we were successful in our community enhancement grant application, and so we have some additional money coming in to add to the interpretive displays, which is very exciting for us. Uh, being able to do additional signage, uh, we are in the process of purchasing a couple of stoves that will be installed um, in, in the house and a couple of the rooms, and um, just moving forward with our additional marketing plans and um, the uh, overall planning for the, for the house. So. Um, that's pretty much all I have. We're open uh, Fridays and Saturdays, regular hours from 10 to 4. Um, and if there's any questions, I'd be happy to, to answer. Oh, I, I have one. I know we hired somebody, I guess, part-time yes. for that position. Um, what are the, uh, other than having the house open and mm -hmm. so forth, what are the responsibilities of that person? Yeah, so uh, she's a 20-hour per week position. We're open on Fridays and Saturdays for limited hours. And uh, she, has a, she has a background in historic preservation and interpretation. And so she's actually been working a lot on uh, our interpretation plan, uh, working on um, kind of setting the, our procedures, inventorying all of our uh, materials. We have quite a few items that were donated. Um, and uh, over time, we didn't really 
have a process of actually maintaining them or making sure that we were tracking what we actually had, how we received those items. Uh, additionally, she's working on marketing materials. Uh, she spent uh, leading up to the uh, grand opening ceremony a little bit of time on, on TV, giving interviews. And uh, so she's a little bit of a jack of all trades. Additionally, she'll be responsible for um, just minor upkeep of the house. So cleaning as needed and um, just coordinating for any activities that, that will need to happen there. So. Or have you choose the faces of Pettigrove and uh, Lovejoy to go over the right uh, person? It has been ordered. <laughs> not been changed yet. <laughs> and the sign company was very kind to, to do it at, at no cost uh, for us. So yeah, it will be they will be flipped. And um, we're also in the process of moving uh, the John McLaughlin portrait uh, that uh, used to be in the, the house that was donated as part of the, the Powers donation. Uh, back into the Hudson Bay Company um, portion of, of the home. So. All right. Anything else? Okay. Item 6F, ODOT I-205 widening project mitigation. Yes. So um, this, again, can be as uh, a shorter, uh, we can dig in a little bit if you would like to as well, but uh, knowing that we were going to have the um, ODOT representatives here presenting on uh, what was happening, this is an opportunity for us to discuss um, wants, needs as, as a group as we move forward. I've had quite a few conversations with, uh, with ODOT and with HDR in regards to the, the 4F and 6F processes. Again, the 4F process is that um, through the transportation uh, um, that we will, um, it's a requirement of the transportation process, so uh, they will make us whole, basically, as it were, uh, in their use of our park uh, for their transportation project. And so they are uh, working with us on some mitigation as it relates to uh, their use during the project. Uh, some of those um, examples that they gave, such as the trail development or the parking uh, across the, the street, are part of that uh, part of that process and them trying to make up for the impact that, that's happening at the park. Uh, the 6F process is, uh, again, as part of the Land Water Conservation Funds, um, they're required to uh, actually purchase property for us because of their using the space for longer than 180 days. And so uh, we have been working with them on, you know, what would that look like? They have specific uh, requests uh, with that process that it be uh, not a standalone uh, piece of property, but they would like it to be in addition to an already existing park if possible. Um, and so we're working with the um, Oregon State Parks and the National Park Service to uh, review uh, what that impact is. They will go in and eventually get a, an estimate of, of the impact of the park and then what a, uh, an appropriate mitigation would look like as far as the, the cost or value of um, whatever piece of property we end up receiving on behalf of that mitigation. And so um, I guess general direction from this group would be you know, is it is it important? I know one of the conversations that they've had is um, as a team is looking at um, you know the property across the street for parking. One option would be possibly making that into uh, permanent parking that would be usable for uh, Sportcraft and John Storm Park. Uh, part of the property that they would build that temporary parking on is already part of John Storm Park. Part of it is ODOT right of way. And um, the suggestion that they gave today was, um, you know, if, if deemed appropriate to make that into permanent parking, that would basically be them uh, turning over deed of that property to the city to be used for parking permanently. Uh, other options would be to look at, um, you know, properties that are adjacent to already existing properties within our portfolio. And so if we have parks that, um, you know, could use another chunk of property to, to make a uh, connection or uh, to round out the, the property a little better, uh, that might be an option as well. So 
Um, again, I, I probably just general direction or thoughts as we begin to go through that process. If it's important to try to keep the, um, you know, the, I guess the mitigation that we're making up for is, is work that will be eventually turned back over to the city anyway in that area. So it's not a permanent loss of use. It is an extended loss of for a period of time at uh, Sportcraft specifically, which is the property that um, requires the 6F process. Um, and so I, I guess just general direction for me is I'm trying to, to find avenues that would make sense. Uh, if you believe we should probably try to stick with properties near the impact area or if we should look at properties generally across our portfolio that we might be able to add additional property to. And with that, I'll, I guess, open it up to, to comment or additional questions. Are we, are we still talking about the general area, though? Well, that's uh, that's that's my question. Is that it doesn't? There's no requirement for the six F process that it has to be um, directly adjacent to the impact area. It just has to be adding uh, additional capacity within our service area. So it could be that uh, the group decides, you know, and the city is able to uh, find a piece of property that's you know adjacent to Glen Oak Park or adjacent to um, Singer Creek Park that we're able to add a, a piece of property. And so if, if there's, I guess, interest in, in us looking for the highest and best value as a system, or if uh, you would like us to, to try to look at impacts within <clears throat> a certain area. Well, you know, we have a lot of, um, Singer Creek's a great example, but where the, where the creek's deep, there's land on both sides, it's not developable and, and so forth to, actually uh, um, procure land like that uh, for, uh, for the natural, well, of course, natural resources is what I'm interested in, but, um, and, uh, uh, and, you know, Jonathan has been doing a great job in invasive removal uh, in the last three or four years. I've really seen differences in various of the parks mm -hmm. and um, to perhaps look in some of those areas and particular areas where there might be some potential connectivity. I mean, we, I've often wondered if we could secure banks on, on Singer Creek, whether we could actually have a trail that took you all the way to Pearl, for example, yeah. or something of that nature uh, mm -hmm. and part of our con 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 connectivity. Uh, so, um, and uh, this is one I've noticed, but I'm sure there are others too, mm -hmm. in which we could, you know, really get some benefit to people that like to walk and bike through the parks area. Got to stick up for Park Place. We yeah, really sure. have yeah, to use yeah, help absolutely. over there. Absolutely. Really. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's properties that could possibly be acquired. I walk the neighborhood. Not so much with traffic any longer. That's a different story. But um, there's part, there's areas that could be acquired. So vacant lot for sale um, right now on Hunter Avenue that could be connected to the Park Place Park. Mm -hmm. it, you know. The, Think about the waterfront, a lot of people use it and so forth, and we've we've been able to secure funds for, for that particular area just because of the nature of the river and boaters and fishermen and all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. it hasn't been that hard for us to find, I won't say it hasn't been hard, but that hard for us to find funding on projects. Yeah, we area. definitely have some park deficient areas in the city that would be uh, nice to be able to add additional uh, acreage to. Mm -hmm. I had one comment. <clears throat> um, so we, we've we been talking, it was a standing agenda item actually on the master plan in Clackamat Park. And of course, there's a lot of variables that are happening. Mm -hmm. But certainly one of the most important things we were going to try to decide is if and when or where we would put a, another boat ramp. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are we going to be able to have that kind of at least we'll focus on that particular issue first, that that might possibly, if we decide that it doesn't belong in that park, that that opens up all the other alternatives we're talking about for, for recreation, grass, less pavement, or asphalt. But I mean, do you see us moving parts of that project along in this committee as far as master planning for, at least on the boat ramp side of the whole issue on that park? Yeah, so the park is, uh, is still uh, scheduled to move forward with master planning process. So that's, uh, that's on our work plan. 
and that will that will move forward. Yeah. And we'll see as it goes. And it will go through this committee. Correct. Yeah. I have a small list of questions that I was writing up before, um, but going along with that one, I think before we really even look towards whether we take a piece of land that ODOT really isn't utilizing anyway, and they're already going to put asphalt on it, and now they want to deed it to us, we'll just leave it the way it is and let us use it anyway. But that's beside the point. I'd like to see the dollar amount, because I think that's the easier way to make the decision. I mean, I, it's just too early for me to tell you, yeah, Phil, let's go buy that lot next to Glen Oak. Or, yeah. um, so uh, let's talk about the easements. They brought up two easements, um, Correct. the aerial easement and the underwater easement. Uh, who currently owns either of the things that would the easements would apply? Are they all City of Oregon City? Correct. Or DSL? Uh, City of Oregon City. Uh, the, the impact, uh, there are uh, some impacts that would be over waterways, which would be the, the DSL uh, section. But there's, uh, if you look at uh, the overhead view that they showed, and they, they circled kind of that, uh, the post, the column section, You'll notice the, the right of way, there's kind of that dotted right of way line, and then a portion of the column support overhangs just a little bit. So it's, I think, like 15 feet or so that it hangs over from the, the right of way into um, the uh, over into the Sportcraft uh, property as well as the Johnstone Park property. Uh, so that's the airspace over the park, uh, which would be a, a permanent. Um, a permanent impact on the park, but not on the physical property. Uh, the other piece that they brought up, which is a newer piece that uh, we've been working with them over the last couple of days, has been that um, they determined that they'll actually require an easement on the subsurface um, property for John Storm Park, most likely. And so uh, they referenced doing a um, a, a grout kind of, uh, you know, drilling and filling uh, 60 feet-ish under the ground. Um, and it was determined that that would require an easement because they're changing uh, the, um, the soil conditions on the property. It's not uh, something that we would probably ever need to use uh, as, you know, for park purposes, 60 feet under, under the surface. Um, but that came up recently, and so we're actually moving forward with a, um, an updated resolution. So as, as you guys are aware, the resolution that went forward to uh, the City Commission a, a couple of weeks ago now uh, was for the um, approval to move forward with a ballot in November uh, for a public vote. Uh, the Commission approved that, and so... Um, after that vote, uh, ODOT determined that they actually needed an additional easement, which was not called out specifically in the resolution and the ballot title and language. And so they came back within the last couple of days and have asked for uh, on the August 1st City Commission meeting that an updated resolution with language that would call out the permanent easement for up to 0.3 acres of property uh, be allowed um, by a vote of the people. And so that's going to be on the upcoming commission meeting is uh, a newer resolution calling out that specific easement. Okay. So, so on that easement topic then, it kind of goes back to Water Board Park and the Trees. Those are impacts directly relating to park, and I would hope that um, PRAC uh, keep the heat on and that staff understand that I believe that money should come back into the park system if it's a financial mitigation mm. or easement payment. Mm. Um, second thing, is Sportcraft, but is the boat ramp officially named Sportcraft Boat Ramp? Uh, that's a good question. Okay, yeah. I'd be curious to know maybe at the next meeting because I, I find it odd that we're using a uh, for-profit business name and a park property for uh, its official name. So it might be good to investigate <clears> that. that it just occurred to me tonight, and I've sat through dozens it's, of meetings on that property. Thing, right? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> And then um, as you go forward, I, I wanted to reiterate what Mr. Buss um, brought up about the piling view. It's mm. some, something I think it's important for you to kind of yeah. keep tabs on. There may be no way that they can solve that, but I think if 
there's adjustments and angles or just something to keep keep the and that, foot on the gas. And then on that's that an additional impact on on the uh, on the park property. Yeah, because that's the per that was the purpose of that structure and the financial cost of putting that structure in. I mean, that was why it was located right where it was at. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I'm at the bottom of my list. <laughs> couple, yeah, I got a couple of things. Um, I want to just re-emphasize re what, what Bill said um, regarding the master plan. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would hate to see us talk about a new parking lot and enhancing a trail mm -hmm. without having a master plan to fit them into. Mm -hmm. And then we find out uh, we should have done something different. So yeah. I don't know what the timing is on the master plan, but I would hope that we would have a master plan in place before we talk about mitigation. Yeah. Um, one thought on mitigation um, with the Willamette Falls project, and to me, I've always tried to keep pushing the idea that the river walk is all the way from Willamette Falls clear to Clackamette Park. Yeah. Helps with moving people in and out of the site, you know, gives them the whole experience of the river. And there's a gap in the improvement that was made uh, to the walkway that's there now. Uh, I'm not going to be able to name exactly the what street gap, but you know what I'm talking about. There's a section that was improved, then there's a section that wasn't, then there'll be another improved section. So maybe maybe we look at that as a part of the whole waterfront master plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're talking 10th to 5th Street, and I, I specifically brought up that in one of those meetings and was the assurance I walked away with that as part of, that it would be finished as part of that, but I don't know. As part of the river walk? Well, as, as d doing all of the any major improvements to that site, not river walk per se, but if they had to restructure traffic flows, oh, all those yeah. things, yeah. Then, then that's a requirement because of the change to the viaduct. Okay. Anyway, it's way down the road, I just mm -hmm. want to get that commercial back in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, Good point. And we do have uh, one public comment on the this item as well, if, uh, if and when we are ready for that. All right. Great. Sorry, I'm afraid I'm turning to someone else that talks at meetings a lot. Um, so a couple things. I wanted to update you on the conversation I had oh, with if the you two. Could, just for the record. Oh, Jesse, Jesse Bus, Oregon City. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Talk, I talked to the two ODOT gentlemen after they gave the presentation and just kind of checked in with them on the view issue of the falls. And th they both said they've been involved pretty heavily in this, and neither of them had ever heard of that issue or thought of it. So they did not know if the new pilings would block the view. Um, a concerning thing that uh, one of them said, and I apologize, I don't remember either of their names, uh, was that, well, if there's uh, a piling that's going to be in the way, that will be where it needs to go and there's nothing we can do about it. Um, and then they, were, they had a short discussion saying, well, couldn't it be moved back and forth? Um, and the ultimate decision they came at in the hall was no. So that, that is a concern. We may lose that view, may need to move the platform. Um, <clears throat> just wanted to give you that update. I wanted to point out something funny, which was that you're talking about 6F mitigation and it's agenda item 6F on your agenda. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, intentional. <laughs> it took a long time to work that out. <laughs> and finally, and this jumps ahead to the reason I came tonight, and that's a different agenda item, so I won't speak much on it, but with regard to an idea for mitigation for this project, um, it involves Waterboard Park. As most of you probably know, the armory um, in the disputed area slash Waterboard Park um, is subject to a 1949 deed to the state. And the deed says that if it's not used for military purposes for the state for a certain number of years, it'll come back to the city. And I, I know there have been some negotiations with Public Works regarding the armory, but that was before the first street property was purchased. Uh, so I don't know if there's still any negotiations happening with the armory site, but this, if the state still has a property interest in the armory, maybe this is the opportunity for the state to say, hey, we're gonna just give you back every part of the armory in mitigation for this project. Um, and that's just an idea. So, and a good idea. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's outside the box. 
All right. Anything else? All right. General business. Six G. Uh, I have nothing on this topic. All right. Item seven. Member reports. Starting on my right. I have nothing to report. The last few months, I've had nothing, but I just wanted to compliment again our uh, uh, aquatic staff and, and people that work at the pool. Um, we've been up there quite a bit recently with uh, kids swimming lessons, and it, it amazes me that the quality of staff that they hire for these evening classes to work with a six-year-old or a ten-year-old. Um, you can walk in and kind of think, oh, they're probably not going to mesh, and by the end of it, my daughter thinks that's just the greatest instructor there, and dad, you misjudged that person. You know, just, <laughs> and, and it just made me think how, how good our senior staff there does at hiring uh, and running the whole program. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. Uh, just one thing, I attended the Ermatinger House opening. Uh, it was a tremendous event, really well attended. Perhaps coincidental that there was beer there, but I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyway, it was it was very well attended, and I just I want to compliment Phil, and I want to compliment Rochelle Parsh publicly for the work that you guys did on that. It was terrific. The house looks beautiful. I think everybody had a great time. It, it was just a very good event, and thank you and congratulations to you and, and Rochelle much. and everybody else involved. Great. Uh, uh, an announcement for tomorrow night, Trails End Band is playing at uh, 7 o'clock down at the uh, end of the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center. And uh, uh, it's, um, it, it's, it was established by the same person who formed uh, Quarter Flash, and, uh, it's, uh, and uh, it, it's well worth going to, and uh, no charge. Who are they called? Trails End Band. Trail Band. Trails End. Yeah. Oh, trails End. Okay. End. Yeah. Okay. So two nights of concerts there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, a so Willamette we Falls tonight, area. We go some ways tomorrow night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Willamette Falls area Heritage Coalition is uh, behind that presentation. The Seven city is uh, co-sponsoring that as well. Seven? Uh, did you say? It uh, is. Uh, yeah. Phil, to say what time it uh, begins at. I don't recall. I think I think it's seven. I'll look it I up. Can, I was going to say we can look it up really quick. To make sure yeah, show. I'm very sure it's seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have nothing. Nothing. Roger. I have some Pioneer Center updates. The parking lot across the street, or is that adjacent to the church? Again, has developed a sinkhole. Um, this the sinkhole is located near the southeast side of the lot on Fifth Avenue, Public Works is looking into it for repairs. Uh, Parks Department is bagging trees to retain water so we don't lose any of the new trees that recently planted. Um, there's a CBD class, 101 class, which is full. Uh, um, that is, has to do with uh, the benefits of marijuana. It's full up, filled up. Uh, Kath, uh, item five, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not doing this right. Um, Kathy and uh, Denise are working together on, the, on a Peace Garden uh, signage, some signage for the Peace Garden. Um, the Pioneer Center will be ordering new computers for the computer lab. Um, regarding the Parks Foundation, uh, the IB, the IB and Waterboro Park that was sprayed in June is definitely dying back and that's good to see. Our next ivy spray will be scheduled for sometime this fall, and we are looking to add on more areas to be sprayed to get the most of our, out of our enhancement grant, which was 17,800. We'll be getting a quote for, also be getting a quote for ivy spraying in Okanema to see what that cost would be and whether that could fit into our grant. Uh, regarding our uh, McLaughlin Promenade uh, planning, which is in full bloom, and we're watering it once a week now and weeding. And we want to thank the VFW for providing us with their water spigot and the water to help with that. Um, we have not reached our full budget for the plants that go in there yet. We have about $500 left, and we'll probably be adding some more plants in there in the fall. That's all I have. 
Um, I also attended the Ermentinger House uh, opening and really compliments to Phil and Rochelle and everyone involved, but it really, really was impressive. So thank you. Um, it was a great time. I wanted to give a shout out to Roger as well. Um, he has really done a yeoman's effort at the promenade park and maintaining that, taking care of that, ensuring that the new plantings have a good start. So thank you, Roger. Oh, thank you. I know it's very hard work, so thank you. That's all I've got. The Heritage Coalition website says the concert is 6.30 to 8.30. Oh, yeah, thank you. Great. Great. Um, staff reports, item eight. Thank you very much. Uh, so the recreation report uh, you received from Denise. Mm -hmm. uh, the charter park ordinances, we do have public comment on this topic. Um, it is here just to give you an update. We're still working on uh, probably within the next 30 days. You'll see the recommendation from this group moving forward to the city commission. Uh, we're uh, updating the uh, resolution, or I'm sorry, the ordinances and the uh, appropriate attachments for that to make sure that they're dialed in before moving forward. So probably within the next 30 days, you'll see those at the city commission. Um, with that, I'd like to invite up um, Jesse Buss on behalf of the McLaughlin Neighborhood Association. Thank you. <clears throat> Again, my name is Jesse Buss. Oregon City, uh, but I'm here in my capacity as treasurer and attorney for the McLaughlin Neighborhood Association. A few things here. Um, first of all, thanks to Phil and his staff for working on this uh, Charter Parks update. Uh, I know that it's not the decision of this committee to decide what's going to go up or down on this uh, as far as inclusion parks list, but you do have advisory power. Um, and I want to point out a few things. Uh, primarily, the draft list, at least the one that I've seen, uh, doesn't include the lower water board park area on the proposed list to go to the city commission to designate it as a park. And the reason that's important is because it, in the recent litigation, which is ongoing for water board park, uh, the judge decided two things. Uh, one, she recently decided that Lower Water Board Park has not been designated formally as a park under the Oregon City Charter, and two, that it hasn't been dedicated under Oregon state law as a park. But that's all she addressed in the case. Uh, what she didn't say, and can't say in that case because it's not about it, is address the fact that the park is still in our park's inventory um, today. And that's one of these blow-ups that I have. <clears throat> this is the 1999 Parks Master Plan, uh, part of the comprehensive plan. And the lower water board park area, uh, excuse me, is here. So it's shown in our park's inventory uh, as inventory parkland, whether or not it's been formally designated or dedicated. Uh, the reason it's worth mentioning is because uh, there's some misunderstanding about the judge's ruling. And some people think she said that it's not a park in any way, shape, or form. Really, her ruling was limited to those two limited issues, but didn't address the comprehensive plan. Uh, the reason I bring that up is to point out that we've got this area um, that isn't designated or dedicated according to the judge, but has undergone a lot of activity recently uh, with the wonderful acquisition by Public Works and other staff of the First Street property at a drastically reduced price than it would have cost to expand public works at Lower Water Board Park. Uh, there's lots of savings, uh, millions of dollars of savings there. And uh, as the city has formally announced, the Public Works Operations Center is no longer planned to be based out of the Upper Yard Water Board Park area. So this creates an opportunity uh, and it aligns with this Charter Park update. Uh, we know that the area is on the current parks master plan uh, and comprehensive plan. We know it doesn't need to be used uh, for public works expansion. Why not include that area now as a park, forgetting what's been done in the past and saying, what does the community want now? Uh, what sh should be used? Uh, what, that, what should that property be used for now? 
Uh, and it seems like a perfect opportunity to update the charter to include that specifically. And I have a few more blow-ups. Just showing that the community and the city, um, regardless of designation or dedication, have considered it this area is parkland for a long time. This is uh, actually 1929, 1933, 1934, 1936, 37, 38, and 39 as well. Official city reports labeling the entire area, including the disputed area, as Waterboard Park. Uh, in 1952, the Planning Commission and the City, city Commission formally adopted uh, this 1952 Parks Master Plan uh, it wasn't built out because of lack of funding, but you can see the armory here, uh, proposed outdoor theater, uh, tennis courts, picnic areas, uh, recreation center, uh, basketball courts, things like that. And this is just one of the many maps that have come to light in the past year and a half uh, showing how long the area has been considered parkland. And again, I'm not asking the committee to try and overrule a judge, simply asking for this committee to make a recommendation to the city commission to prospectively, in the future, consider this area as parkland. That's its highest and best used, uh, use moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, coming to that, not that yet, but I'll come to it in a moment. The list of the parks that we had in the motion that I was questioning on the minutes? Yes. Those are the ones that are going for a endorsement for chartered parks? Correct. Yes. Um, as recognition as parks by ordinance. Yes. Which will receive the same protections as our charter parks. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, water board park that, however it was defined, is a charter park. It is, correct. Uh, that won't be going out to the vote then because it's already a charter park? That will not be uh, moving forward to a vote by the commission because it's already considered a charter park. When is the commission to take action? Uh, on you think the, uh, within 30 days probably. Uh, we're just finalizing the, um, the ordinances. Uh, we should have those done within the next two weeks. Um. Well, we won't have a meeting before that time. Um, I think I think we're going to be setting up forward uh, many goals uh, for the coming for the next commission and their budget cycle and so forth. And mm -hmm. I, I would suggest that we look at the very issue that he's putting forward uh, uh, because um, when I was and I, I supported Public Works and uh, at the time. Um, and uh, in, in one sense, almost still do, except now they have a new, another piece of property. And the reason I always said that was because of so much of the infrastructure work that they have to deal with uh, in problem times is in the lower part of the city. Floods, ice storms. Um, um, they still find infrastructure that they got to replace because it's so old. But that's, that, that's, that's part of the history now. We know Public Works is um, moving. I know they want to keep some land at that site, but it seems to me that uh, lower portion there that we've always been talking about is something that we should be addressing and do that in our goal setting set, our own goal setting session next year. Can I kind of ask a question since this is just for our discussion? I wonder how much discussion do we really need? In other words, if, 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 uh, and I've followed this for a long time, really haven't said much, but as those maps show, if it's all been considered a park, how many of us wouldn't agree with that today? In other words, do we need to go forward into next year with some of these? And I'm not saying even tonight, we could do it next month, but I, I guess. Well, it, my, my statement is if, if you, if we want to do an action now, we should probably beat their 30 day, uh, time for the city commission. I mean, when do you want to take it forward? If you want to take it forward in this process when we're having these areas uh, taken to the voters' charter parks, this would be probably the only meeting we could do it at. And that's kind of why I'm asking just the group in general, does anybody not agree with doing that? 
No, we're not. We're not talking about the lower section of the public works ownership. We're only talking that plateau above there, right? Sorry, you're not talking about the area where the buildings are uh, down on. Uh, that's always been a confusion. Street. Well, that, that's that's the point because at this point that would not, not be something I would support. It's that upper it's that upper portion uh, that I would support. So if, if you're asking what I, I agree, I, I agree I on part of that area. So the, the city's position is that the uh, the upper section, or as Jesse referred to it as Lower Waterboard Park, is uh, considered part of the operations yard, and they uh, the city considers it the upper yard of the operations center. Um, so that's the section that I believe is the contested area that Jesse is petitioning to have you recognize or make a recommendation for the city to recognize that as, as a part Listen, moving forward. When I was on, when I, oh, okay, I was mayor once, and when I was there as mayor. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh. When I was there as mayor, I asked a specific question. Yeah, the land use in terms of the area with the land use that they wanted to be and could be the upper portion, and the other areas that they own in the city, uh, namely the area around the reservoir and some other areas, would that be sufficient for their for their needs in the long term? And the answer was yes. Mm. Now they have more area, and I, I, I don't think I, they can argue to keep the whole area. And, uh, and so um, it, it seems to me that um, I, I don't know how much, well, we got Cameron here, he could probably tell us. Uh, the the uh, acreage of the new site, how does that compare to the old, the current site? Do you have any idea? Relatively the same, five yeah. acres. Yeah, so. And we've heard all along that that was all they needed. So my, I get my, my answer is with, with uh, the Director of Public Works giving me the assurance that, uh, Keeping that, keeping that area under public works as they had their master plan for it and the other areas they own in the city would be sufficient for their long-term needs. Now, they have got the other additional five acres, it's a little bit hard for them to say, yeah, we want to keep the other area now, too. Uh, so um, the question is, do we, want to, do, do we want to make this something that we are going to recommend to go on the charter, which I am sure the city commission will probably reject at this at this and this commission, or do we want to go ahead and deal with this as part of our goal setting session and have a real detailed discussion? I agree that that upper section should become part of waterboard public. So, are you saying perhaps then that we could amend if, in fact, it, do we have a timeline? Uh, it's still supposed to be the first first week of September that the commission wanted to be able to adopt our charter parts. That's what we saw the first time you brought this forward a month ago. Uh, for their, so that, within that, the next within the next thirty days or so, it should go forward. So whether that is the second meeting in August or the first meeting in September, probably in in that time frame. Do you know why there was a hurry or a push to do this? Um, it, we were requested to to bring forward um, the the low hanging fruit, as it were, uh, for the properties that were most easily identified and being able to bring forward as. Uh, being adoptable. Um, we do still have uh, quite a few number of other properties that um, have uh, property lines that need to be um, identified specifically, or we have multiple uses, including um, stormwater facilities and things like that, that we need to confirm that uh, they are, you know, parks first and, and not uh, storm facilities. You know, what that uh, what that language looks like because there are some infrastructure needs that are required through public works so uh, just refining uh, the needs as required and making sure the ordinance uh, calls out everything as, as needed and is water board park one of those low-hanging fruits that we can um water board park is already, already the charter so, yeah. so it's not it's not it's not it's not it won't be on the list yeah. of, of so the the that. process as we identified that we communicated to commission and that we communicated to, to this group uh, as we went through the process was to uh, identify the low-hanging fruit and bring those forward for adoption as soon as possible uh, to begin to work through the um, more difficult locations and bring those forward individually as we had information available uh, to present to PRAC and then to move forward as, as a recommendation to commission. And then once we have all of our non-charter parks identified as parks by ordinance, 
we would then go back and look at our current charter parks and make sure that the language is appropriate and that they're um, uh, adjusted and recognized in the appropriate way. Uh, an example I will give is uh, Clackamas Park is specified as being at the confluence of the Willamette and the Clackamas Rivers, and there's not a lot of detail beyond <laughs> that. And so um, with that, it's a charter park. Uh, we generally know uh, the, the area that is uh, Clackamas Park, but it's not specified. And so we will probably go back and uh, provide an, an accurate map, provide the boundaries, uh, again, bring it forward to the commission to be adopted as a park with those specific boundaries. So um, the water board park would be, you know, as we're going through that process, we could also go through and evaluate that as well. But we're wanting to, to really make sure that the parks that are not currently recognized or have those protections that we did that as, as soon as possible and then go and, and uh, evaluate the charter parks at a later time. Uh, so the go ahead, Mike. So, yeah, Upper Waterboard Park mm -hmm. is a charter park. Correct. Okay. I agree with what Doug said. Mm -hmm. a, a portion. Uh, I'll, let's just call it the disputed area. The stay <laughs> neutral. All or part of that, I agree with Doug. Should be a park. What I don't want us to do is. To do something general. I want to see, you know, paint on the street and a survey mark. Here's the park. Here's not the park. And then get that portion added to the charter park and redefine the boundary of the charter park. Yeah. And the same thing with Clackamat and and all the parks. It, it it's we can't do this to ourselves again. Yeah. Because we don't know where the boundary of a park. Is and we have other ones where we have the same problem. So oh, the promenade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need yeah. to get the boundaries yeah. defined, and, and I, I agree completely with what, what Doug said. But I, I'm gonna, you know, here's the line, mm -hmm. and then we add that portion to the charter park. Yeah, and not not not. I, I don't want to. Oh, I'm going to use the word muddle, <laughs> but muddle it into the our, our, our uh, what's going to be coming forward for the commission to put it to a vote to the people. I think I think we should. Uh, I think that should be part of our goal of uh, setting sessions and bring it to the next commission. Yeah. Right. Good discussion. Mm -hmm. Good discussion. And, and on that, to that topic, um, we will begin starting to uh, talk about the budgetary process in the, the fall um, or early winter uh, before the, the city commission's annual retreat to talk about the budget, which typically happens in, in January. So uh, we'll probably have discussions as a group in uh, October uh, to make sure that we have our um, priorities identified and lined up to, to move into uh, the commission's discussion recommendations. So does, a, does PRAC see any reason not to recommend this to city commission this time for that disputed area to be incorporated as part of the charter? Part of, part of what he says, we don't know what the boundaries would be. Well, the disputed area, we do know what the boundaries are, where they wanted to build. We know the fence lines, we know the armories part of that disputed area. We know, I mean, it's not paint, but at the same time, we I've, I've seen their master plan, I know their boundaries of what they wanted to build on and use as public works. I'm, I'm not prepared to decide on that tonight because, in all honesty, I'm not exactly sure where where the line is that we're talking about, and I want to be sure. And uh, it's easy. Everything on the cliff, it was disputed. Well, that's yeah. That's not. A, I want to see a legal definition and a and a survey, and maybe it's not all of the disputed area. Maybe it's a portion. I don't. I don't know what makes sense. When was the last time that park was surveyed? I'm, I'm sure the I'm sure the operation center. I, I I can't speak to it, but I would I'm assuming that they've had it surveyed as part of their master planning mm -hmm. process. I'm talking about all of Waterboard Park. All of Waterboard Park. I don't believe that we have uh, surveys done for we, all of Waterboard. I know that when we were trying to figure out where we were, where we were going to spray, there's houses nearby and part of the park, mm -hmm. and we didn't know 
quite where to stop mm -hmm. spraying and where the, the property, mm -hmm. the, the, our neighbors there started. Yeah. So, and that's part of the uh, part of the discussion around the the parks in general and recognizing parks through ordinance is that a lot of our properties we don't have you know especially the older properties we don't have uh, survey work done and so it is it is costly to have uh, survey work done and um, it's a budget consideration. So I'll answer my original question is I just don't think we're ready to make a decision on that tonight. It seems like there's. Uh, not enough known and or not enough urgency to it, I don't see a need then to necessarily push it through right, right now. Yeah. But knowing it'll stay soon, it'll come on the, yeah. you know, I, I agree with even this fall getting on. I don't think we even need to wait till goals next year. Point of clarification. Yeah. Oh, I think we can't simple. if you want to come up to the microphone. If, thank you. This is not advocacy, but there is a 1935 survey um, recorded with the county that's labeled Water Board Park, and it's got survey markers and all that kind of stuff on it. So it's been done, but a long time ago. Yeah. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you very much. Pretty good to see it. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. I'd be ready to vote on it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Quick, put that on a fall agenda. Yeah, we can add that yeah. as, uh, as a future agenda item. I just don't see any reason to wait till January, though. Again, that has been surveyed by operations. Yeah. You just didn't see the paint, but it was there. <laughs> well, that's what I suspect. He could bring that operation survey. We could see it on here and probably yeah. be ready to make a recommendation right. very quickly. Yeah, we can probably put together a, you know, visuals and make sure that we have information. Let's, From Prax standpoint, I see this low-hanging fruit. Yeah. Google Earth. Let's let's see what's there now. See where the armory buildings are. See where the other buildings are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not just not just a line drawing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. <clears throat> Anything else um, on that topic? We're moving on to eight C park deferred maintenance and park funded. So uh, we are still scheduled to, to move this forward, working with the city manager on appropriate time with the city commission. Um, one uh, piece of this is that the community communications coordinator is moving forward with a um, public survey. So they're um, moving forward with a, um, uh, oh goodness, now the, the verbiage has escaped me, but the, um, a survey that will be done with confidence of a plus minus that uh, it has some statistic validity, uh, statistically valid survey, thank you, is the verbiage I was looking for. Uh, so to, to be mailed out in phone surveys with, uh, with local residents in regards to the service levels that we're providing across the city and across departments. Uh, part of that survey will be to uh, request of the public uh, questions specific to parks. And the, uh, each department had an opportunity to put in some additional questions that relate specific to our, uh, our department and our work units. Uh, the questions that we did put in there uh, for parks relate to park funding. And so we'll have some questions as to uh, whether or not the general public is comfortable with moving forward with additional funding to be put towards uh, operation and maintenance of parks, as well as their interest in uh, possible bonding for capital projects for parks. And uh, very similar in language as we've used in the 2008 Parks and Recreation Master Plan. And so we'll have a, um, kind of a base point uh, to use with the 2008 master plan and then uh, updated information based on the, the current uh, process. So uh, the uh, surveys plan to move forward in uh, August and then I believe there's a, an October commission meeting scheduled uh, to present the information as, as it came in. So um, she's working with a, a survey company and that's, that's the work that they do. And so they're putting it together in a way that uh, they'll, they'll receive responses appropriate in order to make a, a statistically valid survey to represent the, the community's thoughts as a whole. Phil, I just want to throw this out there. I don't expect an answer, but maybe you take it back to, to her and Tony 
uh, because I question some of the results of a survey this fall relating to funding when the school district's always also doing their thing. I think, it, in other words, it's a politically charged two or three months and the yeah. results are not necessarily going to be accurate. Mm -hmm. And if you save your money and do it outside of that window, you may get a different result. And so I'm just throwing that out there because I would question any result you get in October. No, any, bonded, uh, any bonded election has to occur either associated with the, the general elections. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this so, is just so to get... You can't um, do it on a special election is what yeah. I'm saying. This is just to get uh, general thoughts of the community as, yeah. as they're considering options right. for how to fund appropriately parks and recreation services. Uh, I believe the intent of doing the survey and um, what they will be doing moving forward is that uh, as we move into the budget cycle for the city as a whole, when we're on a biennium budget, that every two years leading up to the, the uh, budget discussion time period that they would have a survey done uh, some of the questions revolve around, you know, over the next two years, what should be priorities for specifically, you know, for the each department and things like that. So I think it's to aid them in, in making uh, decisions as uh, the budget committee and then as the city commission. Okay. As long as the bonding side of that is is the portion that yeah. I, I would have trouble with the results. So, so I'm just That's thinking, a good point. That's all. Yeah. You know, you're probably at a point now where you can smooth over the questions and maybe adjust it. Yeah. Know. Yeah, and Keep that's that a good mind. point. I think the you know the city commission I think is acknowledges that the parks department's not funded to the level that they need to be, and and I believe they're you know just trying to get uh, information from the community at large. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Future agenda items. Yeah. I might. Mm -hmm. Um. What and it's really a for, uh, future agenda item, but I understand there are restrictions on how the dock at John Storm Park can be used. Uh, is that not correct? Uh, correct. Yes. There's, so there's time limitations on how long folks can be um, tied up to the dock. Um, there's no fishing from the dock, which is part of the um, agreement with the uh, State Marine Board, uh, which helped to, to fund the dock. And I, I go by that dock occasionally, and I never see anything there. Mm. And I don't know if anybody else sees anything there. And I know it's, a, I know it's an issue with State uh, Marine Board, but the, the thing is that we restrict uh, that certain things can't happen there, and what they permit to happen there isn't happening. I think we ought to see if we can have some kind of mechanism. Not everybody that's a fisherman wants to be in a boat. And uh, if that's a nice place to cast a line, that's fine. Um, some other kinds of craft probably can't be there, but um, do something with that facility that uh, if money was invested in that the facility actually gets used. Yeah. So that's a future agenda item. And if we could bring up how, what, what in fact we can do with it, what in fact we can do with it, and see if there's a mechanism we could communicate with the state. My hope is the Marine Board is not like the Department of Transportation. <laughs> um, it's so very the, difficult to communicate. The request is to uh, review the current use and possible reuse of the... Of the good idea. Yeah, yeah. Good idea. Okay. Fully concur. The, the other thing that has to do with budget goal-setting issues, I would like to see a, a, a ten -year, the 10-year budget cycle up through this current, current budget on um, the parks budget, how it's increased, and every other department, how it's increased. And actually take a look at uh, if er everything is bad as I say it is with the parks. I presume it is. And, exactly and actually, right. uh, actually uh, be able to view how, you know, what's, what, yeah. we've got to get out of this least un unfunded uh, entity in the city. Good point, Phil, on, on Doug's part about the dock. I would be the, the one additional piece to that that I think would be valuable to know um, is back, I believe when that dock was first built, we still allowed fishing off the wall. Mm -hmm. And that's all been eliminated. Also, Westland has added a fishing dock. So in other words, net gain losses on uh, 
non-boater fishing spots mm -hmm. would be appropriate because they shut us down on that spot. So that may be uh, an avenue to ask them to adjust a different place. Great, I'll add that. I would like to, again, since we have, we don't meet until September, that we um, bring forward again any part of that master plan for Clackamas Park that we can work on. And again, I use the boat landing. I don't know what um, the holdup will be for some kind of an agenda item regarding do we want one and do we do we need one or do we want one or where is it going? But at least work on that piece of the master planning. Does that? Uh, that's my hope. So the uh, the plan is to hire a consultant. To, to come in, uh, we have um, we have to put out an RFP for the consultant work. Um, the process is uh, most likely to, to put it out within uh, the next month, month and a half, and then have that that uh, master plan work start off in the fall, and to be be you know gone through the the fall winter into possibly early spring. And then with the recommendation moving forward to be um, adopted by this group and then uh, move forward to the city commission. And along that same line is um, the, the campground there. Mm -hmm. And do, are, are we interested in improving it, expanding it, eliminating it? Yeah. Um, so again, that's those two pieces will probably work hand in hand, I'm assuming, because there's not that many places you can put that 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 uh, boat ramp in that park that is not going to affect what's currently going on with the rest of that uh, area, whether it's picnics and more grass or just what we want to do. But it seems like if we, I know you're swamped with many things that come at you, but I just don't know if we can get a start on that piece that we've talked about moving forward on, on a very important park that's going to get more and more usage as we get closer to what's going on at Blue Heron. Yeah. Um, so the, the boat ramp, the RV park, and the property across the street that uh, is currently the overflow parking mm -hmm. are all uh, critical components of the master planning process for, for Clackamas. So those will all be included. Okay. Okay. Any other future agenda items? Huh? Well, not necessarily agenda, but next meeting when we were on our bus tour, there was kind of an informal discussion about not taking August off. Oh, yeah. So I was going to throw that out there before we adjourned. Oh, there we got the volunteers thing coming that very day, isn't it? Volunteers. Uh, yep. Yeah. Is our okay. regular meeting time. Yeah, so our regular meeting is scheduled the same day as the volunteer yeah. recognition. Um, I want to go get dinner. We can win something if we are numbers drawn, right? right. There's, yeah. There's yeah. yeah, raffles and yeah. Free dinner. I still think we should do dinner and live music at every meeting, though. Every yeah. meeting. <laughs> hey, school board feeds us. Yeah. School board feeds us. And if you really ask them, they'll sing, but it's no, not I'll good. I'll tell you. The Natural Resource Committee, I think the Planning Commission, too. Planning doesn't do a damn thing for us in terms of any kind of food. At least you get some fruit and you get a little bit of something. Yeah. There's job. some fruit and veggies back there. Right? Yeah. All right, anything else? Next meeting, September 27th, and this concludes our July 26th. Nice work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.